understanding the intricate interplay among infrastructure, race, and social inequality poses a considerable challenge. There is a psychic weight to living in communities that are designed to be disconnected. It affects your social life. My neighborhood that I'm from in the Bronx and Parkchester, we have some of the longest commutes in all of New York City. It is a commute not just to work. It is a commute to do anything. It is a commute to connect socially. It is a commute to connect spiritually. These decisions are designed to disconnect, disempower, and isolate people. And when you layer that with a lot of Robert Moses's racist intent, to very much do so to a very specific kind of people, Black, Brown, low-income, poor, et cetera, you can really see how it actually builds in organizing challenges to communities who actually want to empower themselves. While recognizing the historical backdrop of infrastructure evolution and its ramifications on marginalized groups, it prompts inquiry into whether race singularly or predominantly underpins disparities in infrastructure accessibility and quality. Criticism may arise regarding the politicization of infrastructure issues, advocating instead for an evidence-centric approach to rectify systemic disparities, emphasizing practical remedies and individual empowerment, prioritizing principles like personal accountability, limited governmental interference, and a critical stance towards identity. Centric narratives may take precedence. Skepticism prevails against the notion that infrastructure initiatives are inherently racially biased, favoring considerations such as feasibility, efficacy, and cost efficiency in planning. Overall, given its emphasis on individual resilience and self sufficiency, the portrayal of infrastructure debates is solely racist, oversimplifies, and adheres to ideological biases.